Hello, thank you for joining this presentation. Uh, in this presentation, I will walk you through uh, our solution securing Sky for Business. Uh, most of the slides are related to Sky for Business on premises. Uh, at the end of the presentation, I'll address the, uh, our solution for Sky for Business online as well as Teams. So, at a high level, what our product offers is a security suite addressing compliance, access control, and threat protection uh, aspects of any Sky for Business deployment on prem. It is typically uh, more required when you allow external access or mobility, but there are also scenarios uh, without external access only, for example, for federation or uh, internal control of communication in which, in which the product can be used to. So I would like to start by giving you a five to 10 minute overview uh, on the main product features, and then we'll zoom into uh, most of the capabilities and include some movies and better understanding. So the first item on my list is secure authentication. Uh, secure authentication addresses the threat of an attacker having access to a valid set of credentials, is able to access your infrastructure. And when I say the infrastructure, I mean both Skype for Business as well as Exchange. As you may know, uh, the Skype for Business client uh, shows the user calendar information, which is fetched from the Exchange. This is done by using EWS, the Exchange Web Service. And this same web service can be used to get also emails and attachments. Therefore, it is very important to secure more than just by authenticating using a username and password. And this is what our product does. It offers a very uh, seamless user experience, yet secure for enrolling at the device and using the device as the second factor. The next item is device access control. Device access control concept is to limit the access uh, of potential devices to the minimum needed by your business needs. Uh, the more you control and the more you narrow down the uh, uh, optional uh, devices that can access you, obviously increase security. In our product, you can define rules based on device type, like mobile, PC, web app, and so on, IP phones. You can restrict by vendors, uh, iOS or Android, by operating system version, and you can control how many devices of which type should the user possibly be able to connect. The third item is account local protection. The account local protection is a, a very straightforward threat in which an attacker can uh, lock your Active Directory account and cause general downtime of all of your uh, infrastructure of, by used by the user uh, by locking the Active Directory account. It is, it, this attack goes much further than just uh, uh, causing downtime for Skype. Uh, and it's very easy to carry out such an attack. Only attacker needs is to guess to find out a valid username and simply send several failed login attempts and until causing the Active Directory to lock the account to prevent brute force. Uh, these uh, these attacks really happen, and actually, deploying Sky for Business also uh, gives more tools for the attacker even to identify a valid user because there are differences in the response time between a valid user and a non-valid user. But the, the main concept, the finding the username, is quite easy, and then locking the account is almost effortless. Uh, MDM integration, uh, the threat here is the employee uh, can download uh, Skype for Business on his personal device, which might not be managed, and simply connect to the infrastructure, Exchange and Skype, as, as we mentioned. And by doing this, he actually unintentionally bypasses MDM security later, layers. So companies who have invested in MDM solutions uh, a lot of efforts and money probably 
should uh, make sure that only devices which are managed by these grant vendors uh, are able to uh, access Sky for Business and Exchange. And this is exactly what we do. We limit uh, accessing Skype only to devices which are managed and in addition once the vendor reports a device to be out of compliant perhaps it has become jailbroken or maybe user completely removed uh, MDM control we obviously block Skype for business and terminate any active sessions. The credential protection feature addresses the threat of your domain password being stolen from the device. So, uh, as you know, to sign into Skype for Business, you enter your domain password. This is a powerful password. It's the password for the network. And uh, several companies uh, with high security regulations do not allow uh, using domain password on a device outside of the network. So, if it's a mobile device, so now the user potentially can enter this on device when he is connected to a public uh, Wi-Fi, uh, potentially this password can be stolen. So for this reason, we offer an approach in which the user can create a different set of credentials specifically for Skype for Business and eliminate the usage of the domain password on the device and therefore completely uh, address the threat uh, of the password being uh, stolen. Another use case, by the way, our customers are using smart card and they want to connect their mobile devices. So for the similar reason, uh, we offer, uh, sorry, for this reason, we offer a similar approach in which the user creates credentials to be used on the device uh, and he does not need to use his smart card. The ethical wall uh, functionality addresses uh, compliance, uh, regulations, and also security and even privacy aspects of communicating uh, in Skype for Business. Uh, it uh, offers two main capabilities. The first one is to control who can communicate within Skype for Business with whom. Uh, so in general, when you open Federation, it is open for all users on both sides. So anyone who has the ability to federate uh, can communicate with anyone in your company, including management level. Uh, and this is something companies typically want to restrict. Uh, they want to restrict the external domain to be able to communicate only with a specific group in your company. In addition, once communication is established, they want to control which capabilities should be possible. For example, whether they want to allow fund transfer and to which direction. Uh, some concerns do not allow uh, sending files because they're afraid of data leak prevention aspects. Others don't want to receive files because they are afraid of malicious code. Or others want to completely block. In any, any case, we have full flexibility of controlling each capability, audio, video, desktop sharing, and so on. Um, and this is uh, applicable to different scenarios based on users, uh, active directory groups, or domains. The application firewall addresses threats which are related to anonymous traffic entering the network. This is a scenario which is happening when you invite a guest, an anonymous guest, to join a meeting, someone who you're not federated with, uh, or uh, um, uh, obviously is not a user in your company. And from a security perspective, it means that traffic is flowing into your network without being authenticated or inspected. Our unique application firewall address this concern by sanitizing the traffic, by validating the data. For example, that the meeting ID is valid ID in terms of structure and value. And at last, it rewrites these requests, making sure only legitimate traffic is allowed into the network. The next item is data leak prevention. Uh, any unified communication obviously is an additional channel that needs to be monitored and 
companies who are sensitive about their data uh, typically want to control all communications, not only emails and files uh, and uh, web. Uh, therefore, uh, our product offers uh, um, a solution which completes uh, these uh, requirements by inspecting on the server side any Skype for business client. So it doesn't matter to us if it's a mobile, it's a PC, a web app or whatever, or even if it's a custom application, because we are a server-side solution and not an endpoint solution, we have full visibility of all content and we're able to inspect it using one of the following approach. Either customer already has a DLP infrastructure such as McAfee, Forcepaint, semantic and so on. Uh, in this case, we just simply offload the traffic for these vendors to be inspected. Or if customer does not have uh, such an infrastructure, he can use our own built-in engine, which offers uh, reasonable uh, capabilities around data leak prevention. Uh, RSA is the ability to elaborate or take advantage of existing RSA infrastructure in case customers using such. Uh, we offer uh, the RSA token as a strong two-factor authentication and he can use the RSA code to sign in with or without the domain password. The disclaimer is an engine addressing compliance uh, requirements. It shows different legal texts uh, depending on different scenarios, the text can be flexible depending on type of user, internal or external, type of conversation. It can be sensitive to the domain, displayed in different languages, uh, and it addresses requirements of the user to give his consent or to be aware that his conversation must be inspected. The e-discovery for similar reason of compliance is an engine that allows you to search any conversation done in Skype for Business by different parameters such as text, dates, uh, participants, conversation type and more. And then once uh, search results are retrieved, uh, you can either export this conversation uh, to give it to the user or to any, any um, uh, one who is requiring this, or you can delete it in case it contains personal information. So these these type of models of disclaimer, e-discovery, DLP uh, fit very well into GDPR requirements. The right to be forgotten, the right to get access to my data, the right to give my consent, and so on. And at last, we have the risk engine. The risk engine. Uh, allows you to define geolocation rules uh, from which countries your employee uh, should be able to sign in from or not. It can be a whitelist or blacklist. It displays a live map from where people are connecting, from where the failed login attempts are happening. And it has the ability to profile user behavior and detect anomaly. For example, if I see a person always connecting from a specific country, and a very short time later connecting from a far away location, which does not make sense, uh, we will trigger a security alert and take relevant operation. So, so far I have covered uh, the high level overview of the product. And now I would like to go more into the details and explain the different uh, features, starting with access control and two-factor authentication. So this part of the product is based on an endpoint ID, uh, which is a unique identifier actually generated by the Microsoft Skype for Business client. And we manage this identifier together with the user, which gives us control of which device by which user is able to access. And we offer uh, three approaches how to register a device. These approaches at this point of the presentation are not yet related to MDM, but you'll understand in just a few minutes how how is this related to MDM. So I would like to uh, get help from a movie. 
The first most common approach is the self-service approach. So in this approach, the user logs into a portal. Uh, this portal is available only inside the network. Therefore, we have strong confidence of the user identity. Uh, and once the user has signed in from within a PC or a mobile, or typically from within the corporate, he'll have a limited time configured, 15 minutes in this system, to connect his device. So now he'll bring his device, he will start it and start the app, uh, link in this movie, but obviously Skype for Business. And as he signs in, we capture this identifier, which we refer to as endpoint ID. So as you will be able to see at the background here of the uh, admin portal from a user perspective, you can see the endpoint ID uh, and of this device registered for the user Yoav. This means that these credentials of Yoav can only be used from this specific device. In other words, if an attacker gets access to Yoav's credentials, he won't be able to sign in unless he has the second factor, which is the device that was registered. The second approach is a more conservative admin approach. In this approach, the user does not need to go to the portal. He will simply try to sign in. He will be blocked as expected by our product, but the administrator or help desk will receive uh, request pending their approval. So they'll validate the request outside of the product scope and assuming it's valid, they'll approve the device and once device is approved, the endpoint is signed in automatically and device is enrolled and from this point, user can use Sky for Business as usual without any further assistance from uh, help desk or support. And uh, the last approach is automatic. Automatic approach, the user again does not need to go to the portal. Uh, the portal you see here is from an admin perspective. He will simply sign in. And if he's able to sign in, his device gets registered. So as you can see here, that uh, his device was added to the list of registered devices in this system. Uh, and we'll understand in just a few minutes how we took advantage of this approach uh, while working with MDM. Because in general, we trust the MDM vendor to be secure enough. We don't need, in addition, for the user to go to the portal. But we'll understand this in just a minute. So what you've seen so far, again, is related to device registration not necessarily requires an MDM. But if company has invested in an MDM solution, they are most likely to require that only devices which are managed are able to access Skype for Business because they don't want a personal device or non-managed device which might contain keyloggers or is rooted or jailbroken to access the network and bypass the MDM solution. For this reason, we have developed uh, an approach to limit the registration process, which you have just seen before, only to uh, devices which are managed. And we offer three approaches uh, to achieve this, which are Wi-Fi, uh, application management, or VPN. And let me explain these approaches. These approaches, by the way, can work with any MDM vendor in the market. So as long as he's able to enroll an app or enroll a certificate or control VPN, he's capable for this solution, which applies probably to most, if not all vendors in the market. The first approach, Wi-Fi, as you can imagine, requires a Wi-Fi. This Wi-Fi is a corporate Wi-Fi that only should allow manage devices to be able to connect to. So this is typically achieved by requiring a certificate to connect to the Wi-Fi and enrolling the certificate using the MDM or, or using the profile. So the bottom line is that only managed devices are able to access this Wi-Fi. This is our assumption and this is the responsibility of the customer to configure. But once he has such a Wi-Fi, he then configures our product 
to allow the first sign-in to be done only from this Wi-Fi. So the user must bring his device once here in the blue line to connect to this Wi-Fi and perform the first sign-in while the portal is configured for automatic. So it does not need to go to the portal. But uh, the product makes sure that he can perform the first sign-in only for while connecting to this Wi-Fi. And after he has one sign-in from this Wi-Fi, his device gets automatically registered. And then he can use his device here in the green line over the internet using any network connection. So that's the Wi-Fi approach. However, some customers do not have such a Wi-Fi or they have users who never come to the office or it's complex to manage this. So for this reason, we have later on developed an approach based on an app, a registration app, which we call a, a, a SkyShield app. This is a special app. It is special in the terms that it is not available publicly in App Store or Google Play. It only should be available in the MDM store or catalog. So only users with devices, users of the company, employees with devices which are managed by the MDM vendor should have access to the app and the app is typically uh, pushed or enrolled by the MDM seamlessly for the user. So the user, it's seamless to him that the app is there. And the way it works is that once you start Sky for Business for the first time, we trigger this app automatically to send us information about the user and device identity in order to allow the enrollment to be completed. And let me show you a movie on this. Um, this movie is with Mobile Iron, but it works the same with all vendors. So what happens is the user uh, enters his uh, SIP address and password, and then when he tries to sign in, we detect this device not to be registered. So at this point, we redirect it to a page which automatically opens our app. So this, this stage can be passed only if it's a managed devices, because if it's a personal device which does not have the app, he'll fail this stage and won't be able to register his non-managed device. But if he has managed device, the app will open, it will interact with the MDM vendor of Mobile Iron in this case, and send us information about the user. As you can see here in the admin, we have some information, the UDID and the MDM username. And now the user simply signs in to complete the enrollment. And by doing this, his device is now fully enrolled. He will also receive an automatic message uh, that can be configured, obviously, uh, from the Skyfield admin telling him his, his device was successfully registered. And now his device is fully enrolled. He no longer needs the app. As far as we're concerned, he can delete the app or remove it. He won't ever see it or use it again. So that's the app approach. Last approach is based on VPN capabilities or split tunneling typically referred to. The concept here is that the MDM vendor is configured to trigger VPN to specific URLs. And the way we took advantage of this is when we detect here in the blue line a device which is um, not managed by our product, we redirect him to an address which requires VPN. And this uh, stage can only be passed if the device is managed because the VPN access is obviously managed by the MDM vendor. So the VPN is triggered automatically in most cases and seamlessly to the user. A small part of the traffic goes to our server to allow the registration. And once this is done, the rest of the traffic goes over the internet here in the green line. Because as you may know, working with mobile over VPN is not supported and recommended by Microsoft. So it's just a small part of the authentication. 
and this is also again typically needed only once so after device is registered user no longer needs the the vpn access to be uh, active so just to make sure we're aligned customer needs to choose one or more approaches how to register a device uh, uh, the Wi-Fi, the application, or the VPN. Beyond this, uh, later on, we address the scenario which we wanted to automate in case post-registration, device might have become out of compliance or perhaps user removed MDM control from this device. So uh, to avoid manual operation of blocking the device in our system after identifying such an event, we automated the integration with most of the leading vendors in the market, namely Mobile Iron, AirWatch, Must360, Xen Mobile, BlackBerry, and even Microsoft Intune. So for these vendors, we have added a server-side integration that continuously checks the list of devices in our system against the list of devices in the MDM server. So whenever we detect a device in our system which is no longer managed by the vendor, we obviously block Skype for Business connectivity and terminate immediately any active sessions. And also, if vendor reports a device to be out of compliance, and these are settings configured on the MDM, for example, jailbroken, the typical scenario, we then block Skype for business connectivity and uh, terminate sessions. Uh, for some vendors, we have some additional tweaks. For example, with Mobile Iron, we can force uh, the device uh, to use Skype for business from the Mobile Iron catalog. So uh, this allows the Mobile Iron to remote wipe a device in case it's lost or stolen which is not possible if the user downloads from uh, a public store like App Store or Google Play. Um, let's have a look a little bit uh, on the product settings before going to the topology uh, here. So this is the admin interface of the product. Uh, you can see here list of registered devices. You can uh, block or delete a device in case required. Uh, and literally, it has dozens of settings related to the different functionality the product is offering. In this page, for example, you configure the registration. So you remember for MDM, you typically configure it automatic. But maybe if you don't have an MDM, you would like to choose a self-service approach. And you can control how many devices are allowed how should we handle a PC? A typical requirement, for example, is to allow only PCs which are corporate owned to access uh, Skype for Business, and we identify this taking advantage of certificate inspection. And here you can see how to control which devices, uh, operating system version, and so on. And if you go for the MDM section here, you first need to decide whether you use the app or not. Uh, typically, I would like to say that the app is the most common approach taken, uh, but also the Wi-Fi and the VPN have their advantages, no doubt. Uh, and uh, here, you configure the messages. Everything is configurable. You configure the values uh, to access the web services. Uh, for the vendor uh, in use, Mobile Iron, Must360, and others. And after this is configured, there is housekeeping service here that you m uh, configure to block devices that are out compliant or to block a device which is not managed. So everything is configurable. You can turn on and off each feature. Uh, and what actually happens for performance reason, we uh, get a copy and maintain it of the devices uh, into our system from the MDM server. You can have a look at it here at the support and maintenance section. 
here you can see an example of Airwatch, but it works the same with all vendors. You get basic information like UDID, IMEI, and if a device is compliant uh, or not, and uh, other information about uh, the device itself. Uh, so let's go now to the topology. So the component required uh, for this part of the product are a website, the admin portal, which you've just seen. This is here inside the domain. It's a .NET website on a SQL Server database. Uh, and it's installed on inside the domain. It doesn't have to be on an existing dedicated machine. It could be co-hosted uh, with other uh, websites, certainly other databases uh, to elaborate existing infrastructure. Uh, and then we have the proxy, which is one of the core components. Uh, it's something, it's a component we have written, we named it Bastion, and it is typically installed inside the DMZ. And on top of this Bastion proxy, we have pluggable filters, which are responsible for inspecting the traffic and performing the different functionality. Uh, in this case, inspecting HTTPS and, and responsible for publishing as Skype and AWS. Uh, and in case customer has a generic proxy already in place, uh, here you can see on the right hand side, you'll put the button behind it. So uh, typically these can act as load balancers. So we obviously support high availability for all components. Uh, Bastion portal, we support uh, SQL, always on, during any, any high availability topology is supported. Uh, and the traffic just goes through the proxy into our proxy for inspection before reaching uh, the, the LAN components exchange and, and the front end. Uh, specifically, for customers who are using Big IP, the reverse proxy of F5, we have written a, a, a different or a tighter uh, integration in which we route the traffic from Big IP to the bastion, which no longer acts as a reverse proxy. So you, you can look at it like a, a filtering machine. So the traffic is sent to inspection to our platform that the traffic is modified or whatever is required, the response is returned to the big IP. And based on this, uh, the data flow uh, continues or terminated or modified, but still the big IP is the one publishing Skype for business traffic and not our uh, product. It is based on an IF approach uh, to ease uh, the deployment and configuration. And at last, we have a component, <coughs> a filter, a SIP filter installed on the edge. The edge is the Microsoft reverse proxy of the SIP. And we have this component responsible for uh, authentication scenarios related to SIP. Uh, typically, it's configured to block NTLM, but it has other roles of inspecting certificates and preventing DDoS. Uh, and actually, the main functionality of the SIP comes later with the DLP and the article log, but it is also required for a full deployment uh, of uh, access control MDM integration. Uh, other capabilities we offer which are related is the ability to approve block device. Uh, we can restrict the ongoing connection by IP ranges or first registration or sign in. Uh, you can apply your location rules based on this. We can uh, whitelist or blacklist user patterns to avoid any non-relevant sign in attempt for entering your network. Anything outside of the expected pattern or allowed pattern will be blocked in the DMZ. Uh, we can filter by device type, operating system version. We can block web login. So a customer typically don't want an employee to enter his credentials on a browser outside of the network. So therefore we block this functionality. Obviously this still allows a guest to use a web app to join a meeting, but the employee 
will be a block from entering his password and uh, eliminate the risk of them being stolen from this browser. We can define how many devices are permitted and we can even limit for how long should the device stay connected uh, to avoid the device endlessly connected, which is the default state of the Skype client. We can force the client to sign out after a specific period. We wait for him to be idle, uh, idle and then we sign him up and force him to re-enter his password by also disabling the safe password of the client. Uh, we support multiple apps uh, for large companies, typically there are more than one active directory. We support multiple level admins, so if large companies want to have a local admin, maybe per continent, or country or location, managing a subset of the users. We also have web services uh, to uh, allow integration with existing workflows to approve a new user or, or remove uh, an employee that leaves, or even to rewrite a complete portal in the same UI, maybe that can fit your existing uh, web uh, infrastructures of a rolling device or a corporate network uh, portal. And it also has housekeeping services to sync your Active Directory, to send notification, and it also comes with a nice set of reports around security and compliance aspects in this context, uh, suspicious device types, failed login attempts by user, by IP, uh, any security event listed in the security auditing, we also write events to the Windows event log, to log files, as well as database, so you can integrate with SIM uh, systems and so on. Next feature on my list is the account lockout. So the account lockout is, uh, as I mentioned in the introduction, a very straightforward attack of someone being able to lock your network account by sending failed login attempts. And the challenge specifically with Skype for Business uh, comes from the fact that uh, authentication is possible using multiple protocols, HTTP and ZIP. There are multiple methods uh, like basic authentication, NTLM, but there are, which potentially can be handled with generic product, but there are also specific requirements that can be generated using SOAP, for example, the address book page or, or the web app. Uh, so these are very specific uh, implementations of Skype, which no generic product in the market is able to protect against account locker. And there's also the multiple channels of so where you can sign in from a PC, from a mobile, from a web app, the web API for developers, the exchange, the AWS offers authentication, even the office server for rendering PowerPoint offers authentication. So, so it's a complex environment and it's important to protect it through all aspects because if you don't handle all aspects, you potentially can be uh, attacked. And we offer a unified defense approach in which we monitor all of these options and whenever we detect an attack, we obviously block it and allow your user to seamlessly continue using his Active Directory as well as Skype. And uh, in addition, we also add to this another layer, which is device pre-authentication. Device pre-authentication means we don't allow simply any request to enter the network unless it comes from a registered device. So a simple attacker writing a Python script, sending failed login attempts, will be obviously blocked it because it does not come from registered device. So these are two layers uh, protecting, full protecting you against a camp lockout. The firewall uh, is related to anonymous traffic entering. It's sanitized traffic, so uh, it will validate the parameters, 
the type of the parameters, the number, the destination, your array, the headers, uh, anything uh, to comply was do. We do with specific orientation to Skype because we have learned the protocol and we are very familiar with what is expected. So anything outside of this is blocked in the DMZ. We also do application data validation, which means we validate the meeting ID that is valid for now to avoid non-relevant requests entering your network. And at last, we terminate session and rewrite request, making sure only legitimate traffic is allowed into your network. The ethical wall um, is an engine addressing compliance typically requirements, but also related to security and even privacy in the context of presence and phone number and so on. So uh, companies uh, that have requirement controlling communication uh, seek for solutions such as the ethical wall. It is typically used when uh, allowing federation, but we have example of customers and requirements that wanted this uh, product for internal usage between different groups inside the same company or maybe it's an acquisition of several companies still they want to segregate between either way we offer the same approach the approach is to control who can communicate with whom and which operations should be allowed as you can see in this sample policy here and the policies are defined using two parts one is the condition and the other one is the rule and i would like to show you this live in my demo environment I will first go in the settings of the ethical wall. I'll enable the ethical wall and I'll decide where should the ethical wall be running on. So it depends on the exact use case where the component should be installed. When we are addressing the duration, it's enough to install it on the edge, but there are other scenarios in which we inspect things on the front end or even using the bus for HTTP inspection. And then you decide what should be the scope, of the inspection, internal traffic or typically external. Uh, and there are other settings, for example, how to notify an admin when something is happened. We have three methods, log, IM and mail, how to notify the admin and so on. And then the main area of settings are the policies. So the policy is based on a condition. The condition can be an active directory group. These groups are fetched from your LDAP active directory. It can be a domain, a specific domain, a specific SIP uh, address. And the other side, if it's internal, that's for domain. If, if it's internal, there's also the groups. Uh, in this rule, I have set a policy uh, to be applied whenever my sales group is communicating with any employee from Intel. And the policy uh, controls any capability in Skype, so the chat, audio, video, conference, and so on. And as you can see, the direction we mentioned in the introduction. For example, here, files can be sent to Intel, but Intel cannot send files to my company. And whenever there's a question mark here, which means nothing was set, the engine will continue scanning the rules. You can record the rules just like a firewall to fit your business needs, eventually ending up with the default rule, which in my system is block almost everything. You can also note that you can even block attributes in the contact card if required. Typically, phone number and title are attributes a companies don't always want to share with the external users. After setting these policies, I can mention there are some troubleshooting tools here. Uh, activity monitoring shows you any operation that was blocked and why, based on which rules. Uh, ethical rule calculations is the place in which you calculate the rules and understand why, why they are uh, returned. Cache uh, is the place, as you can understand, in where, in where the rules are cached 
performance reason, and then you can decide, understand why a specific policy, where it was written, and which rules did it contain. It also is reflected in some of the reports. So for example, uh, you have critical wall incidents by user. So you can see uh, which users mostly violated or tried to violate ethical rules. So it can indicate of a training required or any other issue. Uh, you can see uh, ethical wall usage by users, uh, domains you have mostly uh, communicated with. This is also actually driven uh, from the ethical wall uh, capabilities. Uh, one second, it will load here. It is a domain I mostly communicated with, and there are more nice reports available related to this aspect. Um, it also define rules based on contact information. So if the user is in your contact list, it means that you know him, you may trust more and allow more flexibility while communicating with them. It also allows the end user to get some uh, uh, power of uh, defining rules. And it also notifies the user if uh, if something is blocked, uh, it will notify the user the operation was not allowed because of company policy and so on. And these uh, logs you have seen, again, can be written to event log, to log file, as well as table e-notification, and so on. The topology for this part is based mainly on the SIP filter. So if a customer is interested only in the ethical wall, you will simply need to install the website and the filter either on the end, typically, but sometimes on the front end. Uh, the, our system requirement document contains more information uh, in the scenario where components should be installed on. Um, so it's a more simple deployment without needing a reverse proxy, typically, if a customer only needs the ethical one. The next item is the DLP. DLP is an engine that addresses data leak prevention on the server side capability of inspection. And as I mentioned in the introduction, we can either send it to inspection or inspect it using our own engine. And let me show you uh, a movie uh, to better understand user experience. So this movie, uh, we have a system using our engine uh, that is configured to uh, block any message containing the word zoo for some reason, and then to modify uh, any ID number that is sent through Skype business. So Bob here is sending Alice a message, and he's asking her, if she has heard of Project Zoo, the secret Project Zoo, this is uh, terminated by our system uh, or external vendor, doesn't matter from a user perspective. And the end user who sent the message, uh, Bob in this case, receives an automatic message telling him from the Skype shield admin or message was blocked uh, because they violated the DLP policy. And another scenario, uh, Bob sending his ID number to Alice. Uh, in this case, the message is allowed to go through and reach Alice, as you can see, but the sensitive information is removed or masked with other characters. So again, Bob, who is the sender, will receive a message that sensitive information was removed uh, because it violated company policy. And uh, if we have a look at the settings to have a better understanding, so you Enable the model, as you can imagine. You choose the provider. We support currently out of the box, Symantec, WebSense, uh, Horsepoint, Caffey, GTD Technologies, uh, and some other vendors uh, that support uh, such interface. And uh, uh, here you configure what uh, type of uh, traffic to filter, typically outgoing, but it can be also incoming. We have customers, for example, wanting to remove any people list for to avoid malicious code, so 
the the, the LP for this. Uh, you can decide uh, what should be done uh, when the uh, engine is not available, whether to block or not, uh, how to notify the admin, and you can customize the messages uh, shown for the end user or administrator. And if you're using our engine, uh, it's very straightforward. So it's a regular refresh phase uh, for all types, but currently this is a regular expression. You can take action uh, either block uh, on it to block or replace, which you've seen. There's also a monitor option which allows the message to go through but simply registers an event, an incident uh, to be uh, investigated later. And you can decide how to notify admin and end user. And again, you will have some uh, troubleshooting and auditing tools. Uh, any any message uh, blocked by the system registered here in the reports you can see uh, uh, for example dealt events by users so the user who mostly try to violate the DLP uh, rules set in your company uh, next item on my list the last feature is uh, credential protection uh, credential protection is the ability to sign in use a different set of credentials than your domain username and password. We offer either using different user and password or only different password and no need for username. Uh, the idea is that once you sign into the portal, you create these credentials and use them instead of the domain username and password. Let me show you a movie. Um, this movie is one example. There are several configurations. In this movie, we require only a password. So the user logs into the portal, he creates a password, and after creating the password, he will go to his device and including the sign in will be presented with a window. The window is presented within the Skype for Business client. It's a it's a window we override sign in window, the native sign in window with our own window which can be completely customized using your own branding and relevant uh, user information. Here we will require to enter the password we just created. And once the enters the password, he then has a fully functional Skype for Business client with uh, access to both uh, uh, Skype for Business as well as Exchange. Here on the portal, you can see the device is registered uh, during this uh, scenario. And you can use this uh, window also to increase uh, or to ease enrollment, to improve enrollment, displaying uh, messages that will assist the user to understand what should he be doing. In this example, we will display him that he has the wrong password, for example. So when he signs in uh, with the wrong password, we will guide him to you to tell him to choose the password that was created and not the different password. Maybe he's confused or does not understand. These messages can, can be configurable by you to fit your own language and terminology. And there, are, there is a good couple of error messages uh, that help you with the deployment. The apology for this part requires an additional machine uh, inside the domain hosting our authentication tender filter. This is a filter with Kerberos constraint delegation capabilities and it receives sign requests in the bus in the DMZ which is encrypted and signed. After validating it, it will initiate a Kerberos ticket in the active directory to get access to both type and change. Uh, in the same infrastructure, we took advantage of offering this for RSA. So instead of checking credentials against our database, check it against the RSA uh, manager. And I would like to emphasize 
going back one second, that we never store domain password in this scenario. The, you can change your domain password, it's completely transparent to us. The only thing we store is the hash of this for business password. The next feature is the disclaimer. Uh, the disclaimer just is compliance requirements. As you can see in the images, it displays legal text uh, for the different clients, the web app, the PC, in conference or peer to peer. It appears differently based on some technology uh, limitations. And uh, you can find rules to display the text based on type of user, whether it's internal or external uh, conference whether it's IM conference or conversation, so it gives you flexibility to define uh, uh, text. You can have a look here just to get an idea. I don't think you have anything uh, configured, but uh, this the screen can be helpful to understand. You can apply text to specific domain. This allows you to apply different uh, legal text and language uh, based on the domain communicating. Uh, next, we have e-discovery. So the e-discovery allows you to search any conversation done by text, user data, and so on. Uh, it's required for uh, aligning with GDPR. Also, the disclaimer actually is required for the, to give consent. That's one of the requirements here. It addresses the requirements for the user to get access to this information. The right for when he leaves the company, he might want to be his information uh, and the way it works, uh, it is it shows you a dashboard. We can see it live here. Uh, it's here. So you can see here all of the conversations done in my system. I can click on a conversation and see the content itself. I can then export it or delete it, uh, and I can perform uh, some reasonable search based on the parameters and also there are reports uh, by person by by date uh, to the characteristics of conversation done in my system this can be done uh, both using skype for business archiving capability but also if customer does not want to use archiving uh, we offer a solution by creating this information without tabling archiving The geolocation I mentioned allows you to show a live map for more people connecting to analyze for in attempts uh, to define rules, geolocation rules from which country you allow or do not allow people to click from uh, to detect anomaly and so on. This feature should be available uh, at uh, Q3 2018. Uh, so We've covered our uh, Sky for Business uh, on-premises existing product, uh, which is in the market for more than four years. Uh, I would like to share with you a little bit about our roadmap, which is aimed mainly at the cloud. Uh, what we're actually offering is a CASB solution, a cloud security access broker, that will be inspecting traffic going to the cloud. Uh, it will be available for uh, mainly unified communication platforms, but not only as you can see in the sites, so Skype is online, Microsoft Teams, there's the OneDrive Shopport and Exchange, which are part of the Office 365, there's Wix Teams, which was called Spark, and there's Slack. So all of these will be available by the end of 2018, and the features that will be offered are very similar to our on-premises capabilities, which are advice access control. Uh, this is uh, the integration of MDA vendors uh, uh, to restrict the only managed devices to be able to access these services. And a uh, content filtering, namely uh, ethical wall, uh, which is called here filtration, and data liquidation. And we are a very unique solution that no other CAS solution is offering, which is inline inspection. As most vendors 
offer daily provision inspect and use the API after the data has reached the cloud, reached the destination, we have which is the of 